Good afternoon, ladies and gents. We're back with National 5 Chemistry again. Last time, um, we looked into metals and their reactions, their chemical reactions in metals. This is the tail end of stuff that we would have been doing in third year. Uh, when we get back into the classroom again, um, we will be continuing with the National 5 content. Um, I would like to spend one more week, effectively, on metals. And what I'm going to do is tackle uh, two main areas that cause some problems for people in chemistry and they underlie everything that we do a lot of the time I would like to tackle these two concepts here number one um, constructing a formula now you probably think we know that you know the old valency numbers swap them around simplify them well we're going to go into a bit more detail on that today and the second thing that I'd like to cover is something called balancing equations now, there's a good chance your third year teacher um, would have introduced this as a concept. I know I did, and said, don't worry about it if you don't get it. We're going to have a look at why you need to balance equations and perhaps a couple of different ways of doing it. So that's the learning outcomes for today. Let's have a look at constructing a formula first. And as I said, we probably think that's a piece of cake, don't we? We just need, let's pick a couple of elements at random. Let's pick, ooh, um, say lithium. Um, and let's pick a nitrogen, lithium nitride. That's the name of this compound that we're going to make. Now, we need to know the valency numbers. Um, so, we need to know the valency numbers. We swap them around. And then we simplify if possible. That's a question mark. Simplify. I've forgotten how to write. Simplify. Oh, dear. Um... I put a question mark there because that one doesn't always apply. Lithium. Uh, where do we get these valency numbers from? This is what I would like to look at in more detail today. Now, you probably think it's a piece of cake. Where do we get the valency numbers from? Hey, you find the group number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or zero. And the valency numbers go one, two, three, four, three, two, one, zero. Um, yeah, that's very true. But there's a big chunk between groups two and three that we've suddenly missed out all these transition elements. What about them? Well, I'll answer that question. But let's stick with this simple formula first. Lithium is in group 1, nitrogen is in group 5. So the valency numbers for um, lithium are 1 and 3 for nitrogen. According to this, we swap them around. Li3n1. We can simplify that, So, and we usually skip the 1. You can keep it in if you want. Boom, there's our formula. Now, so we'll call this A, the super simple case. Let's move on to B. Um, and this time we're going to have um, iron nitride. Let's just keep nitrogen the same for simplicity. Iron. Fine. If I get hold, I'm going to pause this and get a hold of a periodic table to show you. And we're back uh, with an incredibly unsubtle jump cut. Uh, and we have iron here and now we can see the problem group one group two group three group four group five six seven eight or zero and these guys here are the transition metals they don't have a group so how are you supposed to know what the valency number is well the really good news is because they're not in a group the question has to actually tell you what valency number to use so we're going to say this is how uh, an sq would actually phrase it they would say what is the formula of iron? And then they show a number in Roman numerals after there. So iron 2 nitride. In case you're not familiar with Roman numerals, by the way, 1 is just 1, 2 is 2. <laughs> you get the pattern. 3 is 3. Uh, and they actually switch over to IV for 4. And that's as close, that's as far as we'll ever need to go. So iron 2 nitride. So this is the valency number for the iron. Ah, now life is a lot easier. Because it's the symbol for iron, which is Fe, it's the valency number, which is 2. Uh, the symbol for nitrogen is still N, and the valency number for nitrogen is 3. So we follow the rules before. These are the valency numbers. That's step 1. Swap them around. Fe3, N2. And then we ask ourselves, can we simplify these two? No, we can't. So that is our answer for the formula of iron 2 nitride. Um, I'll just do one more of these because this is unusual. What if we had, uh, well it's not unusual, but it's new to us. Titanium uh, 
or oxide. What is the formula for titanium four oxide? Uh, now that would be titanium element number uh, titanium is. Let's just check the valency number for titanium. It's uh, oh, it's there. Okay, yes, it's a transition metal. That's the giveaway. It must be a transition metal. They don't need to give you that for normal metals. So T I and then a four. And then oxygen is in group with six, so its valency number is two, according to the last chart. Uh, so we end up with that. That's stage one. Swap these valency numbers around. Ti2O4. Now stage three, simplify. Oh, we can simplify these two. That goes down to that. And that becomes one. So it's TiO2, which is the white powder in your Tipex. On white paint, in fact. Titanium oxide. Titanium 4 oxide, to be exact. So that was the first new concept that I wanted to get across to you when doing formulas. If you have got one of the transition metal elements, the question has to provide you with the valency because you can't get it from the normal group system. It's not in a group. Okay, let's go on to our third version of constructing formula. A was simple formula, dead easy. Um, B was involving transition metals where they have to supply you with uh, the valency number of the transition metal. And situation C is something called complex ions. Well, I call them complex ions, some people call them group ions. Um, the reason I want to introduce these is because one of these was involved in the reaction of metals, um, or can be involved in the reaction of metals. Excuse me while I just shot something off in the spare room. Sorry about that interruption. Um, could you cast your minds back to uh, the three reactions of metals that we covered? I'll do these in green, just because it was in the last video. If you're not sure, go back and have a look in the last video. There's more detail. We had metal plus oxygen. That made metal oxide. We had metal plus acid. I think we used hydrochloric acid. So metal plus hydrochloric acid. That made hydrogen gas and a metal chloride. So if you used magnesium plus hydrochloric acid, it would make hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. Once again, these formulas are just simple. There's nothing complex going on here. Um, the last one, though. Metal plus water. That made hydrogen gas, and that's fine but I threw something at you called a metal hydroxide. Now, this hydroxide, this is our complex ion that I would like to look at today. Now for this, we need a page of our data booklet, which I have conveniently. Here's one I printed out earlier. We actually need page eight of our data book. I'm tempted to zoom down on this. Let me see if I can get this working for us. Okay, I've zoomed in on this table here, um, which the SQA gives the catchy title of Formula of Selected Ions Containing More Than One Kind of Atom. You could call it that, or you can call them complex ions. You take your pick. It's all good. Now, if we have a look at this table for a second, there seems to be quite a lot on going on in it. There are is, first of all, there are, they show the charge on these complex ions, and they've divided them into four columns depending on the charge this particular ion has got. Um, so there's poor old ammonium here, sitting by himself, ammonium nomates, with one positive charge, and there's phosphate with three negative charges. These are the most common ones we'll encounter, though, in these areas. In fact, what I'll do is I'll mark with red just the ones which we are likely to come across. I'm actually tempted to just start with hydroxide because that's the one I wanted to deal with today. Um, I may mention nitrate as well. Well, let's start with hydroxide first of all. Now, if we have a look at this, we see the name of the iron and we see its formula. So uh, the metal hydroxide is OH and it's 1 minus. So if I wanted to construct a formula of a metal hydroxide, how would I do it? Well, I would, hopefully, do it the same as I normally do. 
Uh, let's pick a metal. Uh, let's go with magnesium hydroxide. So, magnesium. Hydroxide. We need magnesium, which is Mg. Its valency is 2, because it's in group 2. We need hydroxide. Now, the formula of hydroxide is shown here, OH. At this point, what I'm going to suggest you do, folks, is always put a little set of brackets around here, because it just reminds you that this O and this H are joined together as a little unit. This is a single unit here. We need its valency number. And I don't know if you know this or not, um, but the valency for ions is equal to the charge on the ion. Just a very quick reminder, what on Earth was an ion? An ion was an atom which has lost or gained electrons. Why has it done that? It's done that to give itself a full outer layer, which is what all the atoms want. So that's what an ion is. It's either lost or gained electrons. If the ion loses electrons, then you end up with a positive ion. If it's gained electrons, you end up with a negative ion. So if I'm telling you that the valency of an ion, so the valency of a complex ion is equal to its charge. Fine, we need to know the valency, so we need to know the charge. So if you skip back to here for a second, we find that hydroxide is in the one column, one minus, in fact. So that's great. That means the valency is just one. Don't worry about the plus or minus just now. Come back to that in fourth year, at least around in fourth year. So this is stage one. We now have the valency of magnesium and the valency of hydroxide. Another good reason for putting them in brackets, you're just about to see. Let's swap these two over. Standard rules, Mg1, OH. By the way, you notice that's outside the brackets. We keep it outside the brackets, so we end up with that. Can you simplify one and two? No, we're done. Magnesium hydroxide. And that is how you construct formula with complex ions. This video's gone on longer than I would have thought, so I'm tempted to actually stop it. And we'll cover, I know I said at the start, sorry, I was going to cover balancing equations. I think we'll cover that in our next video. Let's do one more example of this. A formula with complex ions. Two more examples. We'll do a different hydroxide, and we might pick a different complex ion. Um, let's do a, Let's do a combo of two concepts from today. Let's try an iron. Three... Hydroxide. We'll do that first. So I want to know what the formula of iron 3 hydroxide is. Iron symbol is Fe. It's in the transition metals. Iron hides in the centre here. So therefore it's not in a group. But that's okay because the question has given us the valency. 3. So iron valency 3. Hydroxide. As soon as I see that, I see there's a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. That's why these are called complex ions, by the way. I neglected to mention that. I do apologise. That's why these are referred to as complex ions, because they contain more than one kind of atom. Hydrogen and oxygen. Hydroxide, its formula is OH. So that's 1O and 1H. Let's keep them in a bracket. Uh, it's valency. I did tell you the last time that valency equals the charge. Now, you can, if, you, if you've got a good memory, probably after you start to use these, you'll start to remember which charge is on which ion. But at the moment, no problem. Just crack open the data booklet PDF and you'll find hydroxide is in the 1 column. So its valency is 1. Stage 1. Let's swap these round. We end up with Fe, 1, OH, 3. You notice this stays outside the brackets. We don't write the 1. We can't simplify this, so we're done. Fe, OH, Iron 3 hydroxide. Excellent. Um, let's try perhaps a formula of using a different complex ion. Um, a common one that you've probably heard kicking about here and there, 
might be um, nitrate. Now I have slightly clumsily drawn over nitrate there. Hold on two seconds. Let me zoom down so we can see nitrate in more detail. So nitrate is also in the one minus column. However, its formula is NO3. So if I wanted to, let's just zoom back out again. Um, if I wanted to do a metal compound involving nitrates, uh, let's say we had um, magnesium nitrate, actually. Let's go with magnesium nitrate. We've got magnesium is Mg, it's in group 2, so its valency is 2. Nitrate is nitrogen and oxygen, that's what the 8 ending means. So it's a combination of more than one kind of atom joined together. We need to look it up our data book. You can't work it out from the periodic table, don't try and work it out, just go and look it up. And according to our data book, we'll pop these in a bracket, it's NO3. Now that 3 there, folks, means there are 3 oxygens and one nitrogen. It's nothing to do with the valency, and that's why I love putting brackets around them. Down here, we need to have the valency of this whole nitrate group, these three O's and one N, and we get that because the valency is the same as the charge, which is one minus. So in fact, the valency of that is just one. Stage one, stage two, we'll swap these round. And then stage three, we are done. Mg, NO3, 2. Now there's a couple of points I just want to make before I go. You notice the brackets here are quite important. If you didn't have the brackets, you might write it as this. Mg, NO3, 2. That looks like magnesium, nitrogen, and 32 oxygens. That's going to cause confusion. So I suggest the brackets are really important. Also, you also notice I didn't ever swap the 3. It remains there because that is what the data book tells me the formula of this complex ion is. Just keep it together as one little unit. N1O3, there just happens to be two of them. Thanks for listening. In the next video, we're going to cover balancing equations.